Buddha said, those who are content are rich. Only by knowing how to be content can people be truly rich. Our happiness needs life addition and life subtraction at the same time. Without the former, happiness is just an illusion. Without the latter, no amount of possession can be experienced as happiness by a greedy heart. Culture scholar Zhao Yuping said, to be able to add is to solve. To be able to subtract is to be liberated. Happiness is to find a balance between solution and liberation. Different age groups have different ways to balance these. In the first half of our lives, we don't know how great our potential is. We can use our ambitions as our sails, ride the wind and waves, overcome difficulties, and take what we want. In the second half of our lives, many people are tortured by trivial and cruel things in reality, and eventually understand that there are too many things that cannot be achieved in life. As a result, they have lost most of their courage and begin to understand the couplet engraved on Lingyan Temple. How can life be so happy? Everything is only half satisfying. There are some people who do not feel the meaning and joy of life even in the prosperity of success and fame. Instead, they are tired physically and empty mentally. Therefore, they yearn for the coolness and tranquility reflected in the verse. Sweet laurel blooms fall unenjoyed. Vague hills dissolve into night void. As mentioned in the previous video, adding to life, represented by consumerism that has mobilized people's desire for money in an unprecedented way, making people become slaves to desire, forget their initial intentions, and suffer from the crazy pursuit of money. In contrast, Zhuangzi's life subtraction can calm down, slow down, and relax the modern people who are suffering from desire. A good racer's skill is not reflected in his control of the accelerator, but in the control of brakes. The faster one person is, the better he should know how to slow down at the right time. Actually, just as the addition of life does not necessarily increase happiness, so too does the subtraction of life not necessarily increase happiness. Because blindly emphasizing the use of subtraction from the spiritual level to curb desires will make the metaphorical tower of happiness lack a solid, realistic foundation. In fact, desire is not a sin that must be eradicated. One-sided suppression of desire will dilute the internal motivation of personal struggle and social development, which will lead to stagnation or even regression of material civilization. The ascetic Middle Ages or a lesson in history. But the problem of our age is not that everyone does not want to make progress with little desire, but that everyone is exhausted with too much desire. Zhuangzi's life subtraction 
is just good medicine to heal the distress of our time. Mr. Nan Huijin claimed, Taoism, represented by Lao Tzu and Zhuang Tzu, is like a pharmacy. You don't have to go to a pharmacy if you don't get sick, but you have to go if you are sick. If a nation is sick, then this pharmacy is indispensable. Meanwhile, Confucius and Mencius philosophies are like grocery stores that you need to buy food from every day. Confucian positiveness is the staple food. But as the saying goes, people will inevitably get sick if they eat whole grains. When our abilities cannot support our desires, when we are exhausted by our own desires and ambitions, and when our minds are sick, Zhuangzi may be the best place for us to heal ourselves. Zhuangzi's pharmacy can also be used for preventing disease and for mental health care. Nevertheless, every medicine has its side effect. Since it is medicine, it is not suitable to be eaten as a staple food. Finally, I would like to say that we cannot only see the life subtraction of Lao Tzu and Zhang Tzu, but also their life addition. We can't just see Lao Tzu, who rode the bull west out of Hangu Pass and eventually became a hermit by practicing life subtraction while ignoring the fact that he gained his scholarship and social status, served as official of royal archives, equivalent to the creator of National Library or National Archives, and the teacher of the emperor, and wrote Tao Te Ching with infinite wisdom through life edition. We can't just see Zhang Zhu, who preferred to be a tortoise in the mud with subtraction, rather than step into an official career, while ignoring that he wrote the enduring work Zhang Zhu, gained his talent and prestige with addition, so that the king of Chu once sent ministers to invite him to be the prime minister of Chu. Perhaps those who have really taken things up can really let them go. And those who have really worked hard to add to their lives can be willing to subtract in their lives. We've now reached the end of section 5 of chapter 4, which is the final section. Before we finish this chapter, I have two questions for you to think about. You can see them on the screen now. Please pause the video to think about them and continue when ready. True happiness requires which two things? Why is Taoism like a pharmacy? Thank you very much for watching. Take care.